Hello everyone, this is Exish, and today we're going to get on the subject of Roman art. So Roman art is my second ever module for Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. My first one being Equations X, which I have to say received so much good feedback and people were very great about reporting bugs to me. Um, I'm very surprised, very happy, and I just want to thank you all for a great experience with that first module. Um, I wasn't around to make the first tutorial for the first one because I posted it the day before I went to Italy for a week, so my friend Mark made a tutorial on it, uh, and he did a great job on that, I think. Um, if you still have questions on that module, please DM me. My Discord will be below. Um, and the same will go for if you have questions on this module as well. But now, this time, I'm making the tutorial. So, <laughs> let's go with my second uh, module, Roman Art. So, Roman Art has the theme of looking like uh, a Roman structure of some sort. It has a display um, that, has, that shows a piece of Roman Art uh, to buttons with arrows on either side of this display, and at the bottom there's a display that has a Roman numeral on it. So the thing with this module is that it chooses it chooses from 30 different pieces of Roman art. Uh, it chooses six of them, and you can scroll between all six of them using the arrow buttons. Um, but it is important to remember which one you were first on because that can tell you, uh, that's going to help give you how, how you press the button, uh, press the pieces in the order that you need to. Um, so it's important to know what is piece number one, which is exactly where the bomb starts, the module starts off on. So keep in mind that. Um, and also another thing to keep in mind is that the Roman numeral, uh, may be broken so the display is sometimes uh generates a broken roman numeral which I, i'm gonna go over that in a second what i'm gonna do for this module is i'm gonna go over the help section first and not last because it's important to know some of that stuff before you actually get into it all right and so in order to uh, diffuse this module you need to press uh, a certain number of these pieces in a certain order. Uh, and that's why it's important to know what is piece number one and so on all the way to piece six. Um, so then uh, you can do it right. Uh, if you happen to press a wrong piece or press uh, a piece in the wrong order, then a strike will be recorded. And here's the rough part about this module. The module will completely reset. If you get it wrong, it will generate six completely new pictures, put you back on uh, piece number one, and generate a completely brand new Roman numeral that you have to decipher. All right, uh, and then you have to start all the way back at step one. This is a three-step process, just like equations X. However, this one takes slightly longer, hence the reason it's rated as hard, um, especially because of the fact that if you mess up one little thing, you will have to start from the beginning again. So anyways, Let's take a look at the help section first, which is starting from page 6 all the way to page 12. So first things first, you may be wondering what in the world a broken numeral is or what I even mean by that. Basically, a broken numeral is where the formatting of the Roman numeral is a little bit off. So, for example, we all know something along the lines of like IV being 4 in Roman numeral terms. On this module, I, 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 is also 4, and that is the broken version of it. And that is because deciphering and encrypting works a certain way, and we're going to go over that in a second, and you'll see why this is why 4 is 4 I's on this module and not IV. But IV is the proper way to format a Roman numeral 4. Same thing goes for 9. IX is what we know as 9. However, on this module, it's V I I I I. That's 9. Um, so it's really hard to get an understanding of that, but those are the two main ones you need to know. Uh, those are kind of the only ones the module asks about. So that's a, that's a tip there. Um, 
and that's the difference between broken and fixed. You do not need to know how to fix the entire Roman numeral, um, because in, dur during step three, you're going to have a large Roman numeral, trust me. Uh, it's going to be rare if you get a small one, but if you get a large one, um, you do not have to fix the entire thing, just really like the last few characters. Um, and that will tell you whether or not you um, can use a certain rule or what not dependent on what the question or what the rule is asking for in step three. Uh, but whatever the case, uh, deciphering a broken numeral essentially just means converting the Roman numeral to a number or um, yes, converting to converting to a number. Um, so each Roman numeral letter is worth a certain value. And the idea is you say you have a number like 670450, something like that. I mean, let's go 451. That'll, that'll be fun. Um, basically, you take the largest value that can be put into this. Uh... Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's my fault. I started doing encrypting. We're doing deciphering. So with that being said, then. Let me just write out a Roman numeral here for you. Let's do D, C, C, L, V, I. Something like that. That is where we're going to start with deciphering. So essentially with deciphering a Roman numeral, you have to look in the, this Roman numeral table on page 6 and you have to write down the value that is there for each one. So for example, first we have D bar, and then after that, for every succeeding one, you have to add on the value that it's equal to. So C bar is 100,000, which means in total, it'll be 600,000. Uh, D is 500, so we add 500 to that. CC, is going to add up to 200, which in total here is 700. L is 50. Make this a 5. If I can get there, there we go. And then VI, so 5 plus 1 is 6. So that would be your number after you do the deciphering. And say, um, the process is slightly different going backwards, but you can probably already imagine how it works. This is called encrypting, uh, at least on the module. So if you now we can do something like this: six seven four zero one nine. Let's go with nine, because then you can take a look at how the broken stuff works. Um, essentially, you take your number, and now I'm going to start mentioning the stuff we did before uh, for a brief time. You take the largest value that can go into this number, you subtract it from it, right? And then you write out the Roman, corresponding Roman numeral first. And then you keep going until the number is up here is zero. So we got C bar now. Um, and that's going to get rid of that. Then we've got, we can put in an L bar and that'll take away five from there. So then we just got this, which gives us X bar, X bar. That gets rid of that. We got a four in the thousands, which means we got M, 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 M which gets rid of this, and then we're left with 19. Put in a X for 10, and that cuts off that. And now for this part, five goes into it. So then we put down a V, four is left over. We can only put in four I's. And now you can see where the broken part of the numeral comes into play. This is the entire decrypted numeral from that, uh, entire encrypted numeral from that number. This should technically be IX, but as you can see, it turned out the broken way, right? That's what we mean is how, uh, by how encrypting and, and deciphering with this module with Roman numerals works this way and why it uses broken numerals. So hopefully now you get enough of a bearing of that. I already feel like I've messed up something so far. So if, if I didn't explain something enough already, then please please message me on Discord. I will gladly try to elaborate in a better way. Um, 
but other than that, that is some of the main basis of stuff that you're going to need to know for some of the rules that this module has. And then, of course, we also have some more stuff. We have a giant table going from page 7 to 12 containing p pictures of all the pieces of art that can possibly be displayed. All 30. So it has... Uh, its format is simply this, at top is the picture, and below it is its name. This way you can easily go through, look up, and see which ones you have. So, uh, and that's going to be very useful for the first step here. And it, it, it could be useful for, eh, no, it's, I think it's really only useful for the first step, but uh, step three does ask stuff about this too. So, Let's start with step one. Create a six-digit number using the table below. Decipher the broken Roman numeral given by the module. We're assuming it's broken, by the way, even if it isn't actually a broken Roman numeral. Since the display is broken, we have to assume the, the numeral may be broken, so that's why we just call it broken. Uh, decipher the broken Roman numeral given by the module and find its corresponding column. Okay, we have L, XXVI. Let's go all the way down here. And let's do some deciphering. So, L is 50. XX would end up accounting to 10 plus 10, which is 20, which added to this is 70. And then V, which is 5. And then I, which is 1. So, 76 is the column that we have to use according to the table. Yep, here it is right here. It's the first column. So, let me just see if I can remember how this works. Ah, here we go. Perfect. I just did a control click, by the way, in the row, in the column that I wanted. So, it the, the table does expand through three pages, but that's fine. Um, and then, let's continue reading here. Then move from top to bottom on the rows, stopping at each piece the module has, and get the digit from that box. The digits you receive from top to bottom are your six-digit number. So if you still don't understand what's going on, it'll make sense in a second. Essentially, you want to identify all six pieces that you have on this table containing the names of all 30 of them. So this is where you're probably going to want to go down. If you don't know the pictures already, you're going to want to go down talk with your diffuser, try to figure out which ones you do actually have. I know for a fact that this first one is the bust of Nero, and just to prove it to you, come all the way down here. It'll be here somewhere. Here it is. Yep, exact same picture. So you can just do that for each one. I have them memorized, but that's essentially going to be your job uh, as the expert in diffusers to communicate which is uh, which is which to each other, or as many details as you can. And also keep in mind that the expert has black and white versions of the pictures, so you can't use color. All right, so let's go to the next one. This one I know is the dog mosaic. So I'm also doing shift clicks to highlight the rows. So let's look for the dog mosaic. Here it is. And looks like we got the Temple of Jupiter in Lebanon, the statue of David, which is right here, it's the statue of a woman around 2nd century AD, Roman woman, and then the bust of Serapis, which is, here it is, I believe, yep, there we go, back to the initial position, that's why it's good to remember, uh, and now, if you still didn't understand before, this should help. Starting at the top and going down, this is where they first intersect. We got a four. Keep going. Here's the next one. We got a nine. Next, we got a six, a seven, an eight, and lastly, a five. So I'm just going to unhighlight all of these. There we go, and we're done with step one. We got our six-digit number. So we can now go to step two and start step two, which is essentially converting it using the serial number. So 
you're going to want to write down the serial number. We got it right here, T73WS9. I like to line it up like this for easy math, but essentially, you're going to want to go through these steps. Take the serial number and place all letters with the corresponding digits from the table below. Add each digit from your six digit number to their corresponding digit on the modified serial number. If one of the sums ends up being greater than nine, take the sum's least significant digit, the digit farthest to the right, and remove any repeating zero starting from left until a digit between but, uh, one through nine is reached. So let's start with the first one. Take all letters and replace them with the corresponding digits. So T is one. Keep going to the right here. W is next. That's a four. And then S, which is a three. You should now have two six digit numbers. And now you add each, you add them together by each column going down. So the first two digits, essentially you just add each digit to each other. So the first two, we got four and one, that's five. Here we got 16, but as it said, the sum is greater than nine, which means we have to take least significant digit, which is essentially taking the dig digit that's farthest to the right, which in the, our case is going to be six. Then looks like we got nine, 11, far digit farthest to the right is one. This looks like we have 12, digit farthest to the right is two. And then 14, digit farthest to the right is four. Here's our new number. If you did end up with any zeros, for example, something like this, uh, you'd have to remove the zeros. However, if you have something like this, you can't do anything about that. It says to remove the repeating zeros, but that's only if you have any starting before any other digits, all right? Otherwise, if you have repeating zeros like right here, do not remove them. Your goal is to end up getting another six digit number, kind of like this. It doesn't, well, it doesn't have to be six digits, right? Because one of the digits could easily be this, which is fine. You, you just cut it off, like the rule says. But of course, that's not the case for us. Then we get the step three. We have to encrypt this back into a Roman numeral. So let's go to there and let's start the process. I'm going to copy this so that I have the original number here still. We can put in a D bar and subtract that. Then next, looks like we can put in a 50,000 next, which is an L bar. That leaves that. And then 10,000, which is an X bar. 9,000, which corresponds to a V bar. That can be taken out first. That'll leave four behind, which gives us four M's. One, two, three, four. Take all that out. We can put in one 100, which is a C. Two uh, tens, which is X, two X's. And then the number that we talked about before that also can be broken. We're not writing this, remember, that's the fixed version of the numeral, technically. Uh, at least the only fixed stuff you need to know. But for our sake, I, 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 I. Alrighty, so there's our numeral. Now we go up to the top of this step three here, and time to find out which pieces to press and in what order. Encrypt the new number that was received in step two. We just did that. Then read the left column from top to bottom. And the first set of rules that applies is the row that should be used to find the pieces in their order. Note that the table continues. Yep. So this could also require that you do a bit of checking back at the table again, because it will ask about Roman numerals in here. If the broken numeral is less than D bar, is it less than 500,000? Uh, it definitely doesn't seem like it. So therefore we're gonna move forward. If the broken numeral contains at most one X or X bars, has three, so therefore that does not work. 
if the broken numeral is greater than d bar c bar, which, if we look at that, d bar c bar would be 600,000. It's not greater than that, actually. So no. If the broken numeral has at least three eyes, definitely, and the bomb has no batteries. Okay, it has six batteries. I can see that right here. So that's that doesn't play still. If the broken numeral is at least eight letters long, this is one whole letter, by the way. The bar technically is supposed to stand for a symbol that's above it. However, I could not figure out how to implement that. So it's just this parenthesis thing. Don't assume that these are separate characters. This is one whole character. This is one whole character. And then coming down here, this is a character. This is a character. All right, that's how it works. All of these right here are characters. Or letters, essentially. So eight letters long. Well, this definitely looks larger than eight right here, so I'm going to assume that it definitely is, and therefore that's not going to work here. If, if it's at most eight letters, that's definitely not the case. If the Arch of Titus and the Arch of Constantine are, option, are an option, uh, that's definitely not the case. I don't remember seeing arches in there at all, actually. If the broken numeral contains the letter sequence XV, nope. The broken numeral is a multiple of five. The broken numeral. Still no. If the broken numeral is greater than D bar, less than D C bar, that is true. It is greater than 500,000 and less than 600,000. But unfortunately for us, and the bomb has a parallel port. Nope. If the Apollo of Belvedere which I definitely don't remember seeing, is not an option. Okay, cool. And the broken numeral contains the letter sequence I, I, I. Yes, it does. In two places, right here and right here. Perfect, perfect. So that means that our sequence should be the fourth piece, sixth piece, first piece, and third piece. Not sequence, order, sorry. So, if we did this correctly, and I did not screw up, this is the first piece, this is the sixth, this is the fifth, and this is the fourth. So, if we click this, yep, you heard that sound, we didn't get a strike, so that was a correct press. Five, six, yep, one, second, third, there you go. And it does play a little bit of classical music um, after you solve the module. There's three different random bits it could play. But that is how you solve Roman art. There was a lot more in that compared to like when I did catchphrase. A lot more. I feel like I could have missed stuff. But whatever the case, I'm going to do one more of these how, uh, with how fast I do it. So like this is your goal. This next uh, attempt that you're about to see on a Roman art is how fast you should be able to go with this. Once you nail down these things and you're all set with it. All right, let's get a new bomb. All available experts, please report to room A9. Alrighty, so starting off, I like to start off with actually putting the serial number down first. JL7, and I like to replace the digits first. I essentially like to do step two before step one, which is a terrible habit, but you know what, whatever. So D is seven, R is five, J is... 9 and L is 8. So that's our number there. Uh, first one here looks like the Arch of Septimius Severus. We got Ecstasy of St. Teresa. We got the fresco from Pompeii. Where is that? Right here. We got Statue of Dionysus leaning on a woman. Yep. We got a statue of Hades and Proserpina, and the statue of Homer, which is right there. Okay, perfect. That looks like a 82. Okay, this column, 255, 013, just double check.
perfect. Okay, let's do this. Addition, nine, zero. Looks like it's gonna be a two, nine, nine, zero. Okay, open numerals less than D bar. No, at most one X or whatever. Definitely not. Creator, blah, 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 and the fresco blah, 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 is an option. Okay, six in the Pantheon. We don't have the Pantheon, so six and one. Emergency cleared. All personnel, please return to the That was very fast. We happen to get rule number three, which is, that's kind of rare. I rarely ever get the fresco from Pompeii. So, that, for example, is how fast you need to go um, to do it in decent amount of time. Uh, you can do it the other way for first training purposes. That'd be great. But your goal is to get up to this point with this module. I know I didn't do this kind of thing with catchphrase, but catchphrase, I think, was pretty quick nonetheless. Um, and also, for the record, one last thing before I go here. This does ask about other modules. Um, so, for example, if you happen to come all the way down here, and none of these will apply, and then you get here, and you're like, if the broken numeral has no uh, blah blah, uh, oh, that doesn't work. Or forget-me-not is on the bottom. Oh, okay, cool. And there was a forget-me-not, then you can just, just do this, and it'll work. Um, or if none of that happens to work, you come all the way down here. The second to last one before if none of the above applied is <laughs> does the bomb not have an equations x, equations, or braille? So I just kind of chose equations and equations x because, yeah, you know, it, well, mainly equations x because it was my first module. But then um, equations and braille were just kind of random. I thought of equations next, and then I just kind of looked up braille. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been a fun tutorial. Hope this helps you in any way. Again, if it doesn't, just uh, go... DM me with my uh, Discord in the description, and I hope to talk to all of you later. Bye-bye.